Hi, welcome to Faith and Bible ASMR. I'm so glad you joined me. We're going to be going through the Bible study today for John 13, which is on the Last Supper. In our series, Jesus is the answer to our deepest longings. And the next two that are after this are actually on Jesus' death and resurrection. So I'm going to save those for Easter and go beyond them to Acts as we get closer to the end of our study. So I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you want to grow in Christ and that's what this channel is all about. So let's dive into this study. It's by Bronwyn Cardwell. And the verse that she's focusing on is, I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. Great celebrations at our house often center around good friends and the preparation of good food. In this chapter, Jesus had given his disciples specific instructions for the preparation of the Passover meal. He knew it would be their last meal together. And John 13 tells us that this night, which began as a symbolic supper with intimate friends, would end in betrayal, denial, and arrest, and abandonment. But none of it caught Jesus by surprise. Jesus knew that Judas would eat the Passover meal with him before betraying him to the chief priests. Jesus knew that Peter would deny him. He knew that all the other disciples would abandon him. He knew he would be arrested, tried, and crucified. Jesus knew that all of the events of that fateful night would fulfill specific prophecies of scripture. Jesus' mission was clear. He had an appointment with the cross. The Son of God would willingly drink the cup of God's wrath in order for us to avoid the penalty and punishment that we deserve for our sin. But why the betrayal and abandonment? Could it be that Jesus was giving us an example to follow? An example of servanthood, grace, and love in the midst of suffering. That night, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. John 13, 34. The word love in this verse is the Greek word agape, meaning unconditional love. Did Jesus' unconditional love include Judas? Yes, it did. Jesus washed Judas' feet knowing that his heart was wrapped in betrayal. In Matthew's Gospel, it is recorded that Jesus called Judas friend. Even as Judas came with the armed soldiers to arrest him, let that sink in for a minute. What amazing grace and love shown to so great a sinner. Jesus knew Judas better than Judas knew himself. Judas followed Jesus for three years and outwardly looked like a faith faithful disciple. However, the hidden greed and enmity in his heart was not hidden to Jesus. Judas 
is described in the Gospels as a thief and a traitor. In reality, Judas was a pretender and he was easy prey for Satan. Theologian John Piper said about Judas, Satan has power where sin holds sway. Satan used Judas to carry out his plan to get rid of Jesus for good. But God had another plan, and God's plan was for our good. Studying this passage and studying Judas is a poignant reminder of the deceitfulness and power of the enemy. It doesn't matter how much I look, talk, or act like a believer, a true follower of Christ is one who has genuinely repented of sin and believes the gospel. One who is before the Lord regularly asking him to reveal sin and confessing and allowing his cleansing of the heart. Every time we humbly confess God faithfully forgives and cleanses us. What amazing grace and love shown to so great a sinner. At the Passover dinner, that fateful night in Jerusalem, Jesus rose from supper. In verses 4 and 5, it says, he laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. The disciples were confused. This was a job for menial servants, not the teacher especially not the Messiah. But as Jesus humbly performed this act of servanthood, he explained, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. But Jesus not only gave them an example to follow, he also gave them an object lesson. When he came to earth, he laid aside his heavenly glory as the Son of God to come to earth. He took on the appearance of a servant with human flesh in order to humbly serve us. He poured out his blood on the cross to wash us and make us clean. Then he wrapped us in his love and mercy in order that we might become like him. It is in loving and serving that we are most like him. And it is in laying aside ourselves that others see him in us. So her prayer for us is, Dearest Jesus, I am so great a sinner and unworthy of your love and sacrifice on my behalf. You gave up everything for me. Give me a willing heart to follow you without any pretense and to deal regularly and ruthlessly with my sin. I want to love others like you loved unconditionally, but I cannot do it apart from your spirit. Please fill me up, Lord, with all of you so that when others bump into me, they bump into you. In Jesus' name, amen. So her question for us is how? Can you follow Jesus' example of servanthood, love, and grace with the people in your life?
we were just talking about that in my Bible study recently, how to show forgiveness and and um, Jesus' love to people that are even people that are harder for us to love. And, you know, we can show being a servant in love and grace. First of all, we need, like she said, to surrender to God. Um, I have found that in my life, if I try to do it on my own, it's too hard when people have hurt me to show them love, but if I surrender to God and ask Him to help me, He helps me think of ways that I can show His love and I've told you this before, but I often ask him to help me love people the way that he does, to see them through his eyes, to um, see their needs instead of just their actions, and all of that really helps me. Um, I want to have his heart. I want to love people the way he does and I do want to be gracious and when I am not I end up feeling very bad and asking God to forgive me and to help me to to be able to apologize to them to be able to show them his love. I want to be his hands and feet, honestly. Um, so I'd love to hear your answers in the comments. How can you show Jesus' example of being a servant and his love and grace with the people in your life? And I'm just going to close this in prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for the example that you set for us and how to love people and love them well and go above and beyond in showing them that love. And um, even when they maybe don't deserve it, um, pray that you would still help us to be loving and kind and try to show your love to a hurting world. Thank you that you're always there for us to help us. Thank you that you want us to be able to carry out things like so you are going to give us the power to do that and the strength. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Bye, you guys. Have a great day.